I was asked to speak about clonal hematopoiesis. So this is a concept where cells in the bone marrow, particularly stem cells, acquire mutations that then give them some sort of selective advantage where they can grow and dominate the, the, uh, the marrow. And we recognize that this must be a precursor event for all of the diseases that we're studying, the myeloid disorders and other types of blood cancers. And we are trying to understand how the presence of these abnormally expanded cells infer a risk of, sub, of developing a subsequent disease. So my talk was focused on uh, recognizing clonal hematopoiesis in a variety of different contexts and trying to understand what it means in those different situations and what aspects of those, of, the, of those expanded clones might be considered adverse and which might be considered favorable. One of the things that to, to recognize is that clonal hematopoiesis, that is clones in the bone marrow that have acquired mutations, are remarkably common. And particularly in older individuals, we can find them in 10 to 15 percent of people without really having to look too hard. In other words, that they're, these are not rare cells in the bone marrow. These actually are responsible for somewhere between 10 to 20 percent of all the blood cells in the marrow and the peripheral blood. So in that context, we see this age-relating association. And it turns out that those patients do have a slight increased risk of developing a blood cancer, but it's actually not overall that large. So we're trying to understand better what it is that makes some of these people progress and others not. So as, uh, in other parts of the talk, I also discussed uh, other contexts where we see clonal hematopoiesis. So for example, patients who have aplastic anemia, which is a disorder characterized by an immune response against blood cells, we see that almost all patients, particularly older patients, have small mutant clones that are present in this disorder. And some of the clones tend to be more adverse than others. Some of them are trying simply to avoid the immune system, and therefore they're trying to mutate in a way that provides an immunologic escape. Other mutations are more like the mutations that we see in MDS and AML, suggesting that these clones have found a different way to survive, maybe by proliferating better or being more resistant to apoptosis. And we know that those patients are the ones who are actually are at increased risk of developing a subsequent problem or of simply dying from their aplastic anemia. I think in particular the people that we're going to run into clonal hematopoiesis most often clinically are people who have low blood counts to begin with, people that we suspect might have a blood disorder. So if they don't meet diagnostic criteria based on what we consider uh, disease states today, we can sequence these people and identify that about 40% have clonal hematopoiesis. And we know that these patients are at increased risk of developing a subsequent malignancy. So we're, we're therefore able to identify those patients that we need to worry about more, the ones we might need to follow up more often, and identify those patients that don't have mutations and are probably at lower risk, where we might look for an alternative cause of their low blood counts, or at least reassure them that they're unlikely to develop problems in the near future. So it can change clinical practice in terms of how we predict what our patients are going to be like. But I think in the future, we might actually have some way of intervening, that if we know the patients that are at risk of progression, we may have mechanisms to try to prevent that progression. And this allows us to at least identify the group of patients that we should focus our efforts on.